So this theory lecture is about our very first animation exercise, and that is the bouncing ball. And as far as I know, there isn't an animation course anywhere on the planet that doesn't begin with a bouncing ball. Uh, and there's a good reason for that, and that's because it's a really good place to begin. Um, so what we want to do is um, consider the principles, first of all, the principles of, anima of animation that are involved in the bouncing ball. And you, you should by now have watched the 12 principles of animation lecture, so you have an idea of what the principles involved in the bouncing ball might be. And if, first of all, of course, there's timing. There's always timing. How long does it take for the action to take? How, um, how long do the bounces take? Does the ball bounce once every second? One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. Or does it bounce much, much faster? Maybe four times a second. Which would, or, 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 or twice a second, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one, like that. Um, so this is really essentially how fast the ball is going to bounce. Then there's spacing. How wide will it bounce? Will it, is it going to bounce uh, in, in wide bounces along the ground? Or is it going to, is it going to bounce, uh, is it just going to bounce on the spot? In which case you, you've not got any horizontal spacing to worry about, only your vertical spacing. So timing and spacing, which of course you always have in animation. Then there's squash and stretch. The, the ball is probably, if, certainly if it's made of rubber or some soft material, it will squash as it hits the ground and then stretch as it bounces up again. If it's a lead ball or a cannon ball, something like that, it will hardly squash and stretch at all, if, if at all. There's also slow ins and slow outs. As the ball reaches the top of its arc, it will slow in and then, and then ease out again as it falls and picks up speed. So you're, you're going to have to deal with slow ins and slow outs. And finally, you're going to have to deal with arcs, which is to say the ball needs to be on a nice smooth arc or a nice smooth path of action as it bounces around. So those are the five basic principles involved. Timing, of course, is how long it takes to complete an action. The ball may bounce fast, timing uh, 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 or, slow, or slowly. That would be um, uh, slow timing. Here's the spacing again, as we've said, but now illustrated with, with an example. Here's wide spacing and here uh, narrow spacing. And you can, you can see the, the spacing, the, the timing and the spacing in the graph editor. Here's a graph editor in Maya. And in, in, the, in the graph editor here in the horizontal axis, the x-axis, which you'll be familiar with from maths at school, uh, we count the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is the timing. This is how many frames. In this case, the ball is starting at the top of its arc at frame 1 and then landing at the bottom of its arc at frame 7. And what we're looking at here is the Y translation, uh, which is to say the up and down motion of the ball. And, and what the graph editor does is express that up and down motion as a mathematical curve. And in this case, this Y translation is showing us how uh, the timing here is, uh, exists compared to the spacing which is in the y-axis, literally how high this ball bounces. If I were to take this keyframe here and move it up a bit, it would make the ball bounce higher, i.e. it would change the spacing. But if I were to grab this keyframe here and, and move it uh, to the left one frame, it would shorten the timing and it would make the ball bounce at frame 6 instead of frame 7. So that's where the graph editor helps to keep track of timing and spacing with the bouncing ball. Squash and stretch. As we've said, the ball will stretch as it flies through the air and then squash as it hits the ground. Um, uh, a rubber ball will stretch a great deal uh, and squash. Uh, a more solid ball will not. Uh, we also have to follow the arcs here, as we've said. Uh, uh, here's a nice smooth arc of the ball uh, traveling through the air. This is taken from the animator survival kit. If, you're, if your arcs look like this in your graph editor, you know you're in trouble. Um, and that's why the graph editor is so important, because it helps you keep track of what your arcs are doing. Uh, so, for example, if I go to this example again, um, this is a nice smooth arc. Here we've got nice smooth arc, nice smooth path of action compared to this one, this rather nasty one, uh, where the curves are kind of bouncing all over the place. So the graph editor is important to keep track of these things. You can also check your arc in Maya by, by using the Animate Create, Create Motion Trail tool, which you allows you to turn on a motion trail. Um, and it, it shows you 
these numbers here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, are recording the motion of the ball on every frame as it bounces. And you can actually grab these numbers and move them around, which will change the motion of the arc. But turning on the motion trail is a really good way of showing what your arcs are doing in Maya. So, uh, slow ins and slow outs, as we said, you've got a slow in at the top of the arc and then an ease out or a slow out, out as it accelerates downwards. Um, it, generally speaking, the ball will be far, will be, well, sorry, will be slow as it reaches the top of the arc and it will speed up here as it goes towards the bottom. It will not be fast at the top up here and then slow at the bottom. That's the key thing. Um, easing in at the top and then faster as it accelerates downwards and then fast as it uh, as as it flies upwards decelerating into the ease in here at the top once you've got all that working and make sure you watch the separate um, tutorial on the bouncing ball now it's time to think about a personality we could make the ball happy we could make it sad maybe if the ball is happy it's it's bouncing really rapidly you know it's going bounce 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 maybe if it's sad it's kind of going bounce 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 because even inanimate objects can have personality you know okay the, bo the ball is just a ball but we can still give it a flavor we can give it a feeling um, you can also try experimenting with different kinds of balls what kind of ball is it is it a, is it a rubber ball like a basketball is it is it a, is it a lead shot is it is it a tennis ball is it a beach ball all of these different balls will will squash and stretch to different degrees they will bounce high or low according to their properties um, and you can always look on YouTube for reference footage of this kind of thing. Um, obviously, the lead ball is going to bounce a lot less than, say, the basketball. So you can try um, doing different variations and showing the different properties. If you want to get sophisticated, you could create a little environment. You could create a simple uh, um, uh, ping pong table. Uh, this is assuming you, you already know something about modeling in Maya. If you don't know anything about modeling in Maya, don't worry about it. But you could also import uh, something from TurboSquid. There's a great uh, website called www.turbosquid.com where you can actually import free rigs, um, I mean uh, uh, free sets, uh, and you can um, um, uh, then uh, have the ball say bounce on a tennis tennis table. I bet you there's there's very likely to be a free tennis table uh, available at uh, at TurboSquid which you could import into your shot. Or you could build something yourself using super simple modeling techniques uh, which is to say uh, going to the modeling uh, menu and then creating polygon primitives cubes and just creating create a series of boxes uh, and create some steps you know this is this is basically here just one two three four five rect rectangles just sitting on top of each other and you could then try having the ball bounce down the line of steps do as much as you have time for. Uh, this is just a general introduction to the to the theory behind the, the, the ball tutorial. But go ahead and watch the technical videos so you understand the tools and then the tutorial so you get an idea for how it's done.